Welcome back to What Are Tunibs for General Disturbance. This is the Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the north spawn of Cliff Encounter, and it's under the command of the Baseman from Hell. Yes, he's riding in the top Soviet arty, which I think he now believes is the best of all the arties. Of course, it's a close run thing with the Cog for a Gun Carriage, which is also very, very good indeed. I must admit, I like this one as well because its fire rate is so incredibly fast. The standard fire rate is 30.68, but he's managed to get it down to 24.85, and he's knocked over all of that fencing there to give him plenty of place where he can move about without the enemy artist at the other end working out exactly where he is. That's good. And he knows he's going over to the other side, you see, so he's got somewhere he can retreat to when he needs to. Okay, well, he's now looking down the other end of the map and we can see things being knocked over, so there are some enemy there. It's just he can't see them yet. Now he can see a leopard. Okay, he's dialing in. That's out. Oh, first shot went long, but he's relocated quickly over to the other side, just in case the enemy RT were looking to try and do a counter-battery. Well, it's not just the Leopard 1 now, it's an IS-3 and a Chrysler Grand Final. So which one's he going to go for? I'd go for the Leopard because it's got the least armour, but it looks like he's going to go for Chrysler. And this time round, the round lands just in front of him for 328. Now it's an 18 centimetre howitzer, which is capable of 900 alpha, and he'll penetrate through 45mm with the standard ammo and the premium ammo gives you an increased burst radius to 11 from 10 meters. Then okay, next target is the IS-3 and he's trying to damage both at the same time and he gets 177 off the IS-3 and 40 off the Chrysler and he's picking up stun assist so he is benefiting but he's backing up because he left a bit of wall <laughs> spare there and he's now going to move over to the other side yeah, to make the enemy RT think, where is he moving about? They'll see the wall knocked over and think, oh, he must be there, but he's not. Over the other side of the cliff, we can see a couple of tanks, a 122TM and a Wizzy 111-1. I think it's a 111-1. Actually, it's a 111-14. He fires right up on top of the cliff and he gets a pen on the Borask for 835 hit points. So that's a, high, a low roll. But a nice hit which actually scores him a lot of hit points. He's now looking at those two tanks together. Plenty of targets to aim at. Okay. That Centurion is just behind that strut. It's going to be a difficult job to hit him. Rounds out. Oh, but he does! 248 hit points from a near miss. And he's moved to a new position. Now, this game is all about the cap in the centre because it's an encounter battle. With, and that leopard is being shot at by some of our teammates, specifically a T-30 who's come around the corner. And Baseman might be able to get around near that guy, but not for the moment. Okay, there's the Centurion 5-1. That's the Australian one, the RAAC version. Oh, that was unfortunate. It hit the, the column. So he's changing position again. I don't always neglect these bushes as well. He's gone right to the far side, which again, good good place to shoot from because the enemy doesn't expect you to be over the far side. But once you've fired, you can move to a new spot. They've managed to get rid of that WC-111 and the 122TM. Oh, so we're going down the hill. Oh, he's got 343 off the Fosh. Now, he's probably going to need to keep relocating because when the enemy doesn't have a whole lot of um, tanks to fire at, the RT tend to get uh, shooting at the other RT, the enemy RT. And the enemy RT in this game is contra gun carriage. Now, he might not be able to shoot all the way, but oh, there was somebody in that bush. Because the bush ate the shell and there was no explosion, so he, we know that he hit somebody. And I have a suspicion it's a, probably a Scorpion G. Because the enemy team has a Fosh which is out in the open. 
a weapon trigger our Panzer Pia and a Scorpion G and the Scorpion G's tend to go to that little spot the sniper nest grabs out the leopard and he picks up some hit points and also gets a base reset he's doing a nice amount of relocating now that leopard is quite a bit of a problem the leopard prototype gets killed then the enemy leopard and they're now one tank down Okay, he's going back to his sniper nest. You notice the tree's been knocked down. That's normally because there's two tank destroyers up there. One's in the tree area and one's in the bush area. And then yet again, he hits the one that's out front. Now, I reckon that the one out front will be the scorpion. And the one at the back is probably the Waffentrager. But you never know it. Oh, and it isn't. It's the Waffentrager that took the shells. And he's virtually lost all of his hit points. And there was a Menudes up there as well. And there goes the weapon trigger. So he's going for Menudes. It's going to be a near miss. Yes. So I was wrong. The weapon trigger had taken the position at the front. He said I have hit the Scorp G twice. No, you hit the weapon trigger twice. And you stripped away virtually all of his hit points in doing so. Which means now that you are generating, well, you, you've already got 2,402 recorded, but you must have a lot more than that actual damage. He's going for the Maltian, rounds out. It goes behind the Maltian and to the left. So he only gets 109 of splash, but he stunned him and he gets some stun assist. There's only three enemies left, including their RT. There's the Scorpion. Now it's the Scorpion that was at the back. Okay, I can understand that because he is a tall vehicle. Rounds out. Let's see if he can get a kill. Oh, it landed short. If that had hit the scorpion, it probably would have gone through the armor and he might have got a one-shot kill. There's only one enemy left. It's the enemy RT. The Conqueror gun carriage I mentioned before. He's more than likely in those bushes. Yes, we know exactly where he is now. He's just behind that rock. And that's where... Base man from Hell's indicating, rounds out. It lands in front, so I reckon that stunned him. I'd say keep pumping the shells in. He's probably pulled back behind the rock. Keep pumping those rounds in. He's marked the spot again. Our teammates are on the way in. He might not get another round, but it'd be nice if he did. There he is. And yeah, the kill shot goes in. From the T-54 before base man can fire. So we're showing 2863. I wonder how many hit points he really got. And here's the end of battle results for the base man from hell in the object 261. He got an ace tanker in that game. He was so busy he managed to get to an ace. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 22. A gauze medal for doing more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And a confederate from hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently killed by every team, uh, any teammate. And yes, he actually... Didn't get a kill at all during the game, but he did hit a lot of the enemy. His winning in the game was 3,526, which is super unicum standard and fairly good. So, well, very good, actually. Let's have a look at team score and see where he stood. Oh, my God, look at this. He only recorded 2,863, if you remember. He actually did 4,628 hit points of damage. He easily got the highest damage in the game. Actually, let's have a look at the first page again to see how much damage he did to some of them. Well, he hit that Barras for 835 hit points with a penetration right up, up on top of the hill. He hit the Scorpion for 350. 52, which makes me think that he was out front and he did hit him when he was uh, in the bush but the guy pulled back from the bush afterwards and then he hit the Waffentrager twice afterwards for 1,284 and one of those was a penetrating shot so yes he did hit that Waffentrager quite heavily and uh, for 1,284 considering he actually splashed him just afterwards um, and didn't get much for that splash. So he must have got a, a full penetration with a high roll on the first time around. And uh, so, yes, he pretty much devastated that guy. So very well, good, well, very well done and good shooting. And did he get any damage? No, he didn't get any damage on the Conqueror gun carriage at all. The guy must have been pulled back ben behind the bush. Oh, no, he did. Sorry, I beg your pardon. He did. He got only 24 hit points off the Conqueror gun carriage. 
The shell must have gone to the left of where the vehicle was and he only splashed him for a little. Well, that was interesting. Let's have a look at the rest of the, fi at the figures. The T-54 managed to get a tank sniper and 4,268 hit points. And the next high score after that was the Scorpion, who managed 3,118 hit points. And then Conqueror got 3,057 as well, so he was no slouch. When it came to kills, it was the T-54 did the best with 5 kills, 3 kills went to the Gorilla 15, and then 2 kills to the 122TM, the 7032, uh, the Conqueror gun carriage, the Leopard 1, and the Leopard prototype. No kills, I'm afraid, for Base Man out of this game, but that helped him to get the Confederate. When it came to base XP, he's top of the table again, so he's got the top on two of the columns. 1,309 to the base man, 1,280 to the T-54, and 803 to the Object 7772. He fired 14 rounds, got three direct hits and two penetrations. And we know, bitch, which ones he actually got. Sorry, bitch. He, we know which ones he hit for pens. It was the Waffentrager and the Barras, two very thin-skinned vehicles. 15 splash as well, 4,628 hit points, all of it done at more than 300 meters. 11 vehicles were damaged in the game, none were were destroyed, but he did get 5,371 hit points of stun assist off 17 stuns, and that's why his ace tanker is so high because, or the XP is so high, simply because he did a huge amount of stun assist on top of the actual damage he did. 102,284 credits for the battle, 51,142 from personal reserves, a total of 153,425 credits altogether for a battle that only lasted seven and a half minutes long. After re resupply of ammunition and consumables took away 84,825 credits profit. He got seven bonds because this was a tier 10 game and 1,963 XP. Times two for the first victory took away 3,927 experience points altogether. So, uh, as he says, a combined of 99999. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> combined. Yes, I don't think the enemy were very happy about that. Uh, definitely nine, you could say. Um, Ace Tanker. Well, <laughs> yes, I know. He's, he's just being funny. Pretty impressive game. He was very busy and he did the right things as well to move about. Uh, kept moving position. Uh, I don't think the Concord gun carriage can actually extend the range or shoot that far, but uh, he w if he actually moved forward the Concord gun carriage, he might have been able to get base man in range. So he was doing the right thing, the practical thing of actually changing position after each shot, just to ensure that there was going to be no counter battery whatsoever that would actually strike him. Uh, it would have to be pure luck that anything did hit him because he just moved to the spot that the enemy guessed that but it was a fantastic game so well done base man hope you enjoyed that re that video if you did please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm <coughs>